Hello folks, how's it going? So welcome to my review of One Piece chapter 1066 and oh boy did Oda hit a home run with this chapter. I mentioned this a couple of chapters ago, a couple of reviews ago, but when Vegapunk was introduced I said that's Oda pretty much pointing out, hey we're entering, we're about to enter the final saga, we're nearing the end game. But this chapter I can honestly say for the first time since Wano, I've, it actually hit, that, it actually hit that feeling like yeah, we're on the final stretch. You can feel it. Not only was this chapter centered around Nico Robin, but also Oda, the stars are starting to align now with certain things that we've been wondering for quite a while now. So I'll get into that. Cover story, easily, very simple. Um, the Vince Smokes arriving at the castle, German 66 castle. I assume to meet up with Judge. Oda just needs to wrap this up. I mean, everything else except Pudding going with them was, was predictable. I said Pudding was going going to go with them. I was wrong because obviously Blackbeard changed, altered that plan and obviously kidnapped Pudding, which obviously is going to tie up with Sanji anyway, so I'm not too mad about that, but there could be a chance for Pudding and Rage to have that moment regardless. It's funny, the caption of the core story said emotionless, but this, everything else about this chapter was... I mean, it was completely emotional. So we start this chapter off with obviously where we left off, with obviously the huge kingdom being revealed to be in the past 900 years in the past, with advanced technology. We get more insight into that. And obviously it's Robin that starts off with the question. But in the world of archaeologists, there's only what once a man who risked his life to find out about that kingdom. And I'm guessing it's because what we find out later in this chapter is Professor Clover, right? And then Robin asks that machine was produced during the 4th century. And Vegapunk kind of blows that off. It's like, how much do you know about that? But then we find out that Kingdom got erased a similar way the Lucia Kingdom recently got erased because there was a historic battle that took place involving that ancient kingdom with advanced technology against the 20 kingdoms. Obviously, the 20 kingdoms come up on top and founded the world government. So that's pretty cool. We found that out. To make sure the kingdom's ideology wasn't matched by anybody else they decided to erase that kingdom from history they erased it from the history books so i'm guessing they erased the entire island that is like similar to what happened with the lucia kingdom only i think that sabo pretty much survived as Vegapunk, as sanji asked wait a minute then the people who knew about that is yeah they've been obliterated and vegapunk switches focus focus to nico robin if ohio was erased because of this theory it means the government had acknowledged that the theory about is the truth. And Robin kind of, I like Robin bouncing back here. It's like, who the hell do you think you are talking about? It's like that. Not knowing what, well, just not knowing what the real situation was. Because as we find out, Vegapunk only saw the aftermath. Nico Robin literally went through hell and experienced that. So, so Robin's response is totally justified here. So do you think the government will hear it from a powerful person? And then Vegapunk kind of responds like, I'm in the same boat as you because if I talk about it, I'm going to be killed. But then Robin kind of asks, do you know anything about that kingdom? Every book that O'Hara gathered around the world has been, and it kind of cuts away again with Vegapunk kind of mentioned, the world of O'Hara still lives. Obviously referring to Nico Robin. I mean, it's definitely set for Robin in my opinion. We get, I mean, the title of the chapter is Will of O'Hara. We get some interesting tidbits of information here. So the day that the world was in uproar, Scholar Island, O'Hara was famous worldwide. And then this is where Robin's starting to kick in with the emotion. Uh, there's two instances where I'll get into that really struck a chord when it comes to the emotion. I mean, this is where Vegapunk pretty much revealed that like, he was an old acquaintance of the Scholar, Professor Clover. And then Robin's like, yo, you were Professor Clover's friend? And then we find out more about Clover than I thought we would. So he's a part of the Clover Pirates. Go figure. So, and he'd been captured ten times by the Navy. Somehow he's escaped ten times, but he's very interested in the Void Century. He gathered every book around the world, but he still became the famous number one archaeologist in the world. And then we find out Vegapunk, and we kind of see a silhouette of his real body coming to O'Hara after a bit obliterated. We find out there's giants that were on... O'Hara. Seeing that island on fire was because of the Buster Call, the Scotts were trying to stop it. He died protecting the remaining fortunes for the future. Obviously setting up for the new generation. So the clueless soldiers saw it but they didn't value 
realise its value. It was a great victory for O'Hara. So the government don't know about it. That's key. This is where the this is why I talked about with the emotion kicking in. This is the first instance when Rahman starts to tear up because she's thinking about a mother and obviously this obviously soul as well so then you see the rest of the straw hats like complaining to mega punk like yo you made our little robin you made our robin cry so robin asked ohio o'hara ex tried to expose that kingdom just as you predicted then it was, it was the truth mega punk kind of asked what do you know about the books in the lake because he apparently mega punk wanted to bring him to punk hazard but fell upon the deaf ears with a higher up so then we get more information about, and this may be the most important part of this flashback sequence. Goes to the aftermath, of, he sees the giants from Elbath. Obviously, they collected the books. Out of nowhere, in comes Monkey D. Dragon, who meets up with Vegapunk. So, this kind of ties back to what Vegapunk was saying two chapters ago when he said he was about to talk about Monkey D. Dragon, but he kind of. But that's where the chapter ended. We actually get the reel of. Vegapunk's actual body on top of Mon Monkey D Dragon and by the way did you notice that Dragon wasn't wearing his tattoo or markings on his face that's, he got pissed off with what happened with O'Hara so that's interesting and I'm going to get back into that in a minute because I think this, could tie, this might tie into a theory that a lot of people have been having so we see that he's mentioning that he's already built a an army to go against the world government obviously Ivankov and Baffle Kuma again that's another nod to Jory Barney because, because Jory Barney did mention that Kuma was with the Revolutionary Army and that this might be the biggest tidbit of information that we've gotten when it comes to dragons as an acquaintance of Professor Clover so that's interesting because we never knew that and apparently Robin didn't know that either so that's why Drink Dragon got pissed I don't know if it's his entire motivation for like because he's already put an army together because he's already mentioned he mentioned even Cough and Kuma so it's already been taking place so so he says Deb Clover's death will not go in vain. This is like where Robin said, I didn't know Dragon was Professor Clover's acquaintance. And this is probably the biggest reveal as well. It's, we got a lot of them in this chapter, but it's like, the books of O'Hara didn't fall into the government's hands because I was very interested in them. I secretly went to Elbath. They let me read all the documents. So the giants that gathered the books took them to Elbath. And we find out leader was Sol, who's apparently still alive. At least that's what I took from this chapter. So in other words, I read about, read all about O'Hara and the secrets of the world. It's all in the head. And Robin puts two and two together, and the name of that giant's captain is Sol, right? This is where the reveal kicks in. It's like, right now, he's hiding. No one will disclose, disclose his whereabouts. Because the last time you saw Sol, he was frozen solid. This is the second instance where this, the emotion of Robin kicks in. For me, it hit home because... Instead of bursting into tears and like screaming, she keeps it in and she's still t tearing up. That hit a chord because it's like she wants to let it out, but she's like, Thank you, Dr. Vegapunk. Please don't let O'Hara's battle go in vain. So there you go. And apparently, they're still having problems with the boots because Vegapunk's still in that gray area when it comes to the straw hats, which is pretty cool. It's going to change once, once, once he's targeted, it's going to change anyway, especially with. Now the real Vegapunk meeting up with Luffy, which is, which is like, we go to the ending portion of this chapter where we see the giant mecha that's on the ground. Now I'm wondering if that mecha's from Elbath, it doesn't matter because it explodes anyway. It's like Chopper and Luffy is like, yo, Chopper's like, yo, move robot, and Luffy's like, it probably has a name, so maybe we need to call it that other nickname, like Robonosuke, Robonosuke, because Luffy makes a comment about the real Vegapunk looking like Kinemon yeah, and Barney's just like yo what are you children on here it's like that won't make it move but instead what it ends up doing is I don't know if that's because of Luffy saying that but it ends up exploding so we didn't find out anything about it other than it's from 900 years ago in the past explodes and out of nowhere wouldn't you know out comes the real Dr. Vegapunk. Now, apparently was he under that mecha the entire time because he looked squished but the, then he says Someone please help, I was, while I was warping, the space got distorted. Again, the emphasis on time travel. Let me get the reveal of the real Vegapunk that met up with Dragon. And what's interesting about this is like Vegapunk recognizes Barney, says, Oh, you've grown up. And then immediately says says to Luffy, Hey, you are Monkey D. Dragon's son, aren't you? I knew you would come here. I'm going to get into that because that's, that's going to that's fly over a lot of people's heads. I know it. 
So then they alter the boost so they can fly up or skywalk. So that's pretty cool to end the chapter. And we get the reveal of the real Vegapunk. If you notice the caption, I don't know if this is legit or not, but it says SSG. So what the hell is Vegapunk? But that's how the chapter ends. So th this chapter was great. It was phenomenal because this chapter does two things. Number one, this sets Robin to have more incentive than any other straw had to go to Elbaf because if Sol is there alive, there's going to be a reunion. So you're not going to cut that out. That's number one. Number two, you know, before in his lobby, we didn't know any next to nothing about Robin. Not not the straw hats, not us as the viewers. But as soon as but as soon as that arc started, we get we we learn more and more about Robin, about her backstory, where she came from. Everything about Nico Olivier, Professor Clover, but now we got more information about him in this chapter. The fact that he was not only connected to Vegapunk, but also Monkey D. Dragon. And obviously CP9 were part of that arc. Vegapunk just spilled the beans about a, a few things about O'Hara to Robin, and about having a connection with Elbath. So, we didn't know about that. I find it very ironic that we, and we know who's coming into town with CP0. To me, this clarifies... At first I thought that, I mean, this fight could go one of two ways because Zoro and Brook right now on the ship, so they could encounter Cypher Paul. Or to me, I, and I wasn't too sure at first, now I'm set. Like, I, I, I agree, I think Robin should be the one to go up against Rob Lucci. Now, the only thing I don't know is we only saw Kaku and Stussy with Rob Lucci alongside with Lunarian Pacifista Kuma and SSG, so... So if they're coming in, I don't know how many, we don't know how many members of CP0 are coming in. There may be Khalifla, Blueno, I don't know. If that's the case, then I don't get I think Robin should be the one to fight Rob Lucci. And Nami can fight Stussy for all I care. But Robin needs to be the centerpiece of that fight. And I hope she doesn't get restricted. Like I said, the stars are aligned. Especially with Vegapunk having a connection with Professor Clover. You think Robin's going to sit by and let CP0 kill him? No. That's not happening. I don't know if Luffy's going to get involved in this fight. I don't think he ne needed to work against Rob Lucci. And the other thing this does, and this, like I said, this sets up Robin tremendously to go to Elbaf. This chapter may have given Robin more incentive than any other straw hat, maybe even Usopp, to go to Elbaf because of what was revealed. Not only were the books of O'Hara there, Soul is on Elbaf. So I was expecting Robin to, like, burst out screaming into tears when she found that out but she kept it in like i said that was a powerful that was a powerful moment but that moment's coming with a reunion on elbaf i guarantee you elbaf is being hyped up this much i got a feeling that elbaf may be the next major arc to go down in one piece whatever barney reveals about the reverie post this up uh, post the vegapunk arc elbaf's gonna be the next major arc i think only just pretty much Guaranteed that. I don't expect it to be the length of Wano because you also have the final arc as well in in Laughdales. Given everything that's gone down, you can't introduce a new island with the Royal Poneglyph being on there. With Elbath being hyped up this much, with as much historical significance as we've gotten in this chapter, with some, I mean, it pretty much writes itself with Robin and, and Usopp wanting to go to Elbath. This arc may focus on. Frankie, but Elbaf is going to focus on Usopp and Nico Robin, so that's great. And Otis pretty much says, I don't know if this is going to happen, but he said he would like his aim is to end the series within the next three years. So it doesn't make sense for CP0 to show up after this chapter, after Robin's gotten that hang, just to be captured again to extend the series even that much. And even if a straw hat is captured, how how long are they going to be captured for? With Oda saying that he want, his aim is to end the series within three years. Don't know if that's going to happen, but obviously, you do. if you're Oda, you'd do everything you could not to prolong that. So, yeah, it doesn't make sense. It, the stars are aligned for Robert to do something, hopefully. Also, Jory Barney as well, because like I mentioned, the, the mention of Kuma... Even though it's a small tidbit of information, it's a small detail. Robin's not the only one who's getting a character focused on it's Barney as well as well as Bartholo Kuma and find out his backstory that's going to they're all going to tie up together like I said that's Od that's incredible from Oda's behalf I'm wondering how long do you have this vision of O'Hara mapped out how long 
was it foreshadowed? Because if he did this knowing before the time skip, or even just after the time skip, that's insane because, and this is the biggest part of this, because we find out, because Vegapunk says to Luffy, hey, you're Vegapunk's son, I knew you'd come here. Okay, how the hell did Vegapunk know, number one, that Dragon had a son, and number two, that Luffy would show up, because when we see a dragon, like I said, he, he doesn't have the tattoo, he doesn't have the markings yet, so I guess the revolutionary army hasn't been completed, but he's recruiting. So, and it took place 22 years ago. In story, Luffy's 19 or 20, how you want to go about it. So Luffy should not was not born back then. So, unless Dragon mentions something off screen, like, hey, I have, I have an unborn son on the way, then then there's no way that Capone would know about that. How did he know about Luffy would show up? Buggy D Dragon went to Elbaf in the first place and he got pissed off after seeing the aftermath. Now there's a theory going out there that and the other thing too, like I said, this may explain some things about the time skip is Monkey D Dragon, every time Luffy's brought up been brought up by our koala, we saw it after Dress Rose, his first priority was how's Robin doing? How's Robin doing? Like that's all he's been talking about. He doesn't he's shown more interest in Robin than he has his own son. So um and maybe there's a maybe maybe this chapter explained that. But we don't know the connection. So he we know he was on the oh, well. There's a theory going on around that Nico Olivier was married to Dragon and that and Dragon was the father of Robin. That's the theory going out there. This chapter I'm gonna say I mean, it's still not clarified, it's still a theory. That theory is more possible than ever before after this chapter. And it may explain why Dragon's been so interested in Robin, if in fact that's the case. And if that's the case, boy, does that tie up things with Luffy and Robin. Holy shit. Like I said, Oda hit a home run with this chapter. For me personally, this was easily the best chapter of the entire year. Bar none, not even close. Not only was this chapter focused on Robin, not only does it set up Robin to do something epic pr pretty soon. It wasn't just this chapter as well. Remember back, I mentioned this when Vegapunk Lilf and thought about attacking the Straw Hats. Who was the Straw Hats that Oda decided to hype up as being a threat? Nico Robin and Zoro. I said that wasn't done by accident. That was done by design. And now this arc has turned and focused on having huge implications when it comes to the void century obviously the secrets to that ancient kingdom that got erased so we think is on Elbaf that's Robin's goal to find that out on Elbaf so that like I said this also could tie in with Robin actually doing something epic against CP0 maybe against Rob Lucci that'd be phenomenal like I said Oda showcasing Robin giving her more emotion than we've ever seen post time skip because it's one thing to have Robin cry out, I want to live, but to have that emotion and ball it up, and when you you know there's going to be feels once she reunites with Sol. That hits her just as much as it did it on Enia's lobby, and we find out more about O'Hara than we ever thought possible, and Professor Clover. So, like, just getting Robin to showcase more emotion, or, rather than just dark jokes, which is, rather than watching Robin look good and be a badass, this is a... This is a plus. To get extra to give her extra dimensions to her character that she needs going into the final saga. So I don't know if it's gonna lead up to another power up. I hope so. I hope it leads into something epic. I don't know what this means for the connection with with Dragon and O'Hara. Maybe it's possible that I don't see this chapter Oda giving us this chapter just to have Robin captured again by CP0. No, it's not gonna happen. Like I said, unless the Roponoglyph is on Mary Jose. That's the only way I see it. Either than that, no. Also, may, we find, may find out a lot more about Luffy pretty soon. And, and the thing to note is, not we got the Robin hat coming in. Not only do we get this chapter, we're rapidly approaching the Nico Robin versus Black Mario fight in the anime and Wano, aka the best 1v1. The, the coolest thing about this is going to be see Nico Robin's voice actress in this when this chapter gets animated that's going to be phenomenal this chapter was amazing let me, tell me your thoughts in the comments below that's going to do it for you guys thanks so much for watching like the review if you don't thumbs up i appreciate that subscribe to have more one piece catch you guys later thanks guys bye